Hello people of the YouTube world and all who's watching this. I am Mickey Z901K and in today's video we are going to be talking about every single book that I have read in September and we're going to be talking about my October TBR. Two things. The first thing is I know I said in my last week's video that this video, hold on let me zoom out just a little bit. I know I said in the video last week that this week's video would be a decorate with me. Well, plans changed because of Target. So long story short, Target did not send my items to me that I was supposed to receive yesterday so I could film my decorate with me yesterday. And that's what I had planned to do. I was literally filming the portion of the video where I show you guys like the haul of everything I've got and they sent me the completely wrong order not one thing from my order showed up so we're flip-flopping videos my video next weekend was supposed to be this video but we're doing my September reading wrap up a week early <laughs> so let's get into it the first book that I read in September was Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood this is the first Allie Hazelwood book that I've read um I haven't read the Love Hypothesis and I've owned it since last December so I really need to read the Love Hypothesis but I've read this because I had heard so many good things about it and I'd heard it's pretty much just like the love hypothesis just in a different font so I picked it up and I enjoyed it but I didn't love it I gave it a 3.75 rating it felt kind of boring the side plot in this book just was a little bit boring to me I liked be, but I just did not like Levi as much as I wanted to like him so 3.75 stars still liked it but wasn't my favorite the next book that I picked up in September was the inheritance games and if you guys don't know I talked about this book a few videos back and I talked about how I DNF'd it because it wasn't what I wanted um I started it back in September and I finished it mostly because one of my friends on Instagram was posting about it and she was like I'm struggling with this book and I'm like hey I'm reading that book right now too let's do like a like a last second buddy read type thing and we did she gave it a three star rating I gave it I gave this book a 3.25 star rating so not much off of my friend by the way if you guys want to follow her her name is Gabby I love her posts she posts every single day on Instagram so definitely go give her a follow but anyway back to the inheritance games I don't know if it's because I didn't listen to this book. There are some books that I just feel like you get a better experience if you listen to them. I just, I didn't like it. I thought the first three-fourths of this book is really boring. It sets up the world and that's pretty much what it is. I mean there are some like mystery things happening but it just felt like the mystery wasn't the main plot. Really boring up until the plot twist at the end. I thought the plot twist was done really well. I didn't like either of the boys either. I thought that they were all strange and I, I just the next book that I picked up was the Hawthorne Legacy and I DNF this book. I got my marker is still in here. I got to page 120 and to be a second book it felt like a first book just with more information if that makes sense. Like it felt like it was a first book all over again. Not really much has happened and I'm like a fourth of the way through the book. I'm so disappointed in this series. I really wanted to like this series. I still have the final gambit but will I I ever read this book probably not I just really want to know who she ends up with and that's about it I just did not like it and I'm so sorry to whoever loves the inheritance games I tried I really did 
Okay, so literally the same night that I DNF the inheritance games, I picked up these Violent Delights. This was probably one of my most anticipated books on my fall TBR. I was so excited to read this book and thinking back on it, I feel like I enjoyed it more than the rating I gave it because it was a fun read. It took me probably three nights reading like six hours in total. That's probably how long it took me to read this book. Slower than what I would normally read it, but I did like how it ended, but it wasn't my favorite. Would I put it up there in my five star reads with like Daughter of a Pirate King? No, but it was still good. It has promise. This was Gina Chen's debut novel, and I feel like her writing really has potential. I feel like her storytelling really has potential. I feel like this book is going to turn into a really good series. I gave it a 3.75 ish. I'm leaning more towards a four star for this book just because I enjoyed it. I'm gonna automatically buy the second book when it comes out, hopefully, next year. I didn't love it. Love it but it was good okay the next book I actually finished today like literally earlier today and I've been listening to the audiobook for like three days and that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson this book I was so surprised by the turn this book took. It was really slow. I would say the first half of the book was really slow, but then once you got past the first half of the book and stuff starts going down and Truly Devious comes back, that's not a spoiler, that's on the back of the book, it really starts to pick up and once you get like introduced to the characters and you get into the flow of reading, it really starts to get good and I was pleasantly surprised by this book. I give this book four out of five stars. I'm gonna buy the finishing stare and possibly the third book next week so I'm really excited to dive back into this series hopefully next week even my boyfriend who doesn't really have any interest in what I read said he was invested in how this story was gonna play out so if that tells you anything this was a good book Okay, now for the books that I'm still reading, but I've read them enough to kind of get a sense of what star rating I'm going to give them. And if it changes, check my Instagram. But for this one, this is Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match. This book gave, it gave me the vibes of the Adams family. I don't know, just the family dynamic between her and her brother. They kept to themselves and that just really screened the Adams family and I mean just the setting and everything. Like the dark, mysterious, creepy old house setting is what really drew me to this book and the fact that it takes place. I think it takes place in the 1800s. It's really kind of funny too. There have been a few moments where I've actually laughed. So this book will probably be a 4 to a 4.5 star rating for me. I just think it's so good. It's taking me a while to read it just because of the writing style that she put into this. I'm really taking it in and I love it. I love it so far. So four to a four and a half star rating at least. Okay now the last book on my what I read in September is Light Lark. I wanted to pick this book up. I wanted to know what it was like because if you guys don't know there is a lot of controversy surrounding this book. People are proclaiming that it is literally the worst book ever. That it should not have got the hype that it receives on book talk that this book is just not what she proclaimed it to be and you know surprisingly I'm going away from what everybody else is saying about this book and I'm gonna say that I really like this book I'm listening to the audiobook so I'm like over halfway probably I like it I mean that's that's all I have to say about it is I'm enjoying this book it feels to me like more of a lower grade like a middle grade fantasy it's very easy to read I do like this book I think that this book proves that you should even if you are relatively intrigued about the facts about the book like what it's supposed to be about decide for yourself whether you want to read this book or not don't let the hype scare you away from a book now I think that she has potential to do better there are some things in this book that I just don't like I think that her character development could be better the game is confusing 
to me. I thought it was going to be like a deadly game, but if you read the book, then you'll know. I don't want to give too much away, but the game is a little bit confusing and the character development just is not going anywhere so far. Maybe a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's a great debut novel. That's my opinion on Light Lark. Take it with a grain of salt. Like I said, decide for yourself how you feel about this book. Okay, that is all that I have read in September. Now let's quickly talk about my October TBR. I have, I have 13 books sitting over here with me. The first book is we Hunt the Flame. I wanted to pick this book up first, mostly because Libby told me <laughs> that my hold is ready for this book and I went ahead and confirmed my hold. So I want to go ahead and at least start on it and try to get through it throughout the month. And I've heard great things about this book. I've heard the world can be confusing. So that's why I really want to listen to the audiobook and read it at the same time. Because I feel like, especially with fantasy books, if you listen to the book, I feel like it helps you get a better understanding of things in fantasy books. I'm gonna try to read this one first and get through it. I don't know. We'll see. I think the audiobook is about 20 hours long, so we'll see. I've got some pretty chunky books in, <laughs> in here, so we'll see. The next book series that I want to read in October is the original trilogy for A Court of Thorns and Roses. I have seen so many people do reading vlogs over these books recently and it has really convinced me that I need to pick up these books because everybody loves these books and I really want to see if they're as good as everybody says they are. I started on Akatar. I don't know if you can tell. I'm on page 113, chapter 13. Akatar was pretty good when I first started it, but it wasn't really grabbing my interest all that much. But I've heard that the first book is not the best, but the series gets better, especially the second book. The second book is everybody's favorite, so I really want to try to read it. Finally, I can understand what all the Akatar TikToks mean. <laughs> I am really excited to read this trilogy. Okay, so the next book I want to read is The X-Hex. The X-Hex is a witchy supernatural rom-com. I'm really interested in reading supernatural rom-coms right now. And this book, I mean, I can read it in a day. And the second book is actually on its way right now. It'll be here on Wednesday. I really cannot wait to read both of these books. And I'm planning on doing a reading vlog with both of these books. Continuing with the supernatural rom-com, the next book that I want to read is The Dead Romantics. This book, it's got ghosts in it. I feel like it will be a very good book to pick up in between maybe Akatar. Continuing with the supernatural rom-com books, I want to read Not the Witch You Wed. Once again, it's about a witch. I really think that this book is gonna be good as well. I don't know if it's gonna be as good as I feel like the X-Hex is gonna be, but I feel like this book has potential to be really good too. And if you didn't know, she's a witch, he's a werewolf. I also want to film a video where I'm reading only spooky books for a week. So going along with that spooky book, theme I want to read House of Hollow. This is supposed to be like a spooky fairy tale situation that's kind of creepy but it's fairy tale vibes so definitely want to pick this one up. I also want to pick up The Wicked Deep. Spooky vibes, spooky town. So very excited for this one. I also have here The Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I've heard such good things about this book. I don't know if I will get to it this month but I'm putting it on here as a hopeful. I will hopefully read this by the end of this month. It's really short. I could read it in between series maybe or in between all the rom-coms. So I'm very excited for this book nonetheless and if I don't get to it this month I will probably more than likely get to it next month. The next book that I have is Kingdom of the Wicked. I've had this book for a couple of months and I feel like it is going to be the perfect fall read and I just want to read it so bad. I just feel like this book is going to be so good and I'm really excited for it so we'll see when I decide to pick it up who, who knows honestly with me the next book I have going along with the witchy theme is Serpent and Dove I'm excited for it I'm excited for the haul witch hunter and witch getting married I feel like that's going to be a really interesting storyline and I would 
love to see how that plays out. Okay, the last book I have is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. I really want to read the Infernal Devices series first because I've heard that this is the best series in the whole Shadowhunter world. So, very interested in the Infernal Devices. <laughs> And with that being said, that is all of the books I have on my October TBR and that I have read in the month of September. Let me know what's on your October TBR. And with that being said, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe. And be sure to turn on the post notifications so you don't miss next week's video. I'm going to be finally decorating my room for fall in the next video. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the Target does not send me the wrong products again. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye!